Good, good. So we have an idea of who who is here in our audience and anybody wants to chime in. We're a very um, casual group here where we like to do a lot of listening and pronunciation of each other <laughs> while we're going through our situation. Uh, we are going to talk to you today about some books because that was one of the questions that came up when uh, we put out our survey is, you know, tell us something about pronunciation books. So Patrick is going to uh, talk about some surveys and some research that he's done. But I want to make sure you know who our Teaching of Pronunciation IG coordinators are this year. Besides myself, we have Randy Reitmeyer. Hi there, Randy. Hello, everybody. And of course, we have Patrick Rosen. So that's our team for the year. Um, it seems to me that we have a lot of people who are CATISO members, which is excellent, so that you know that you have a lot of benefits being a member. Some of you are not necessarily from California. Um, some people from outside of California do join us because we do have such a rich professional development program and, and you don't have to travel very far. You can just go to your computer and go ding and, and you're in. Um, we are going to have, uh, besides our, uh, you know, we are, top is really probably the most active interest group and we put on um, our events uh, every month as much as we can. Um, and in addition to that, the Catiso organization has conferences every year. So we have a spring conference and then we have our big annual state conference in the fall. So we do have something coming up in April, which we'll talk about a little bit more uh, later on. Um, but just to let you know that if you're not yet a member, consider joining us because you get a lot of benefits from being part of our group. Uh, I also wanted to share with you in, in case those of you who haven't um, been to our presentations recently or our um, most recent conference, you may want to know, well, what are we doing? What have we accomplished? Um, so I'm putting up in the chat a link to uh, a review of the webinars that we did in to 2020 and 2021. Wow, that, that it kind of seems a long time ago, but not that long ago, certainly during the pandemic, you know, time passes differently. Don't you feel that? that you kind of lose track of, you know, the days of the week and so forth. But in any case, we did have a chance to do some mixing and mingling at our uh, fall conference together. Um, and we also, as I said, we did uh, a survey. So we have an idea of what people are interested in, in um, talking about or learning more about or doing some research on. So um, we're trying to uh, respond to all of those things. Now we also have a Padlet, which is um, uh, it shows us a lot of what's going on and what has gone on in terms of events that the teaching of pronunciation has held through the years. Now teaching of pronunciation interest group started in 2013, so it's not the oldest one and it's not the newest one. We actually have three new ones that came up in this past um, semester. So uh, we've been around for uh, a bit and if you'd like to know more about the purpose of TOP and meet some of our past coordinators and get access to our professional development webinars, um, then certainly uh, access it from here. So um, those of you who are members of Facebook can also join us at the Facebook top group, which is uh, listed right down here. And we also have the ability to interact with each other on the message board at Catisol. So those are great places for us to keep in um, contact with one another. So now I'd like to hand it over to Patrick because he's going to uh, give us an overview of Off the Top Shelf, a review of pronunciation textbooks. Take it away. Well, thank you so much, Marsha, and thank you. Um, thanks everyone for attending. We really appreciate that. We appreciate that you're, you've decided to um, spend uh, this Friday morning for some of you, and, and Friday is often a day off for, for us. Um, ESL teachers. Um, so we re we're really happy that you've decided to join us. Um, so just like, let me just um, go into the presenter view right here. Okay. Yes. So um, like Marsha said just a moment ago, we 
had a question about pronunciation textbooks um, on um, in our survey, and also um, one of our colleagues posted it to um, the uh, top interest group message board. And we thought that would be a great pretext to take a look at what's out there, um, what's been what what what's being used by um, professionals in the ad adult education context um, in colleges and university programs um, and to take a, a bit of a critical uh, look at some of them um, to um, show what we really love about them and um, which textbook could really fit your needs depending on uh, the kind of educational context that you might be uh, teaching in. Um, so uh, I would like today to start by um, taking a look at uh, some of the more popular and and well established titles um, used in uh, the, the, the used in the college and university programs in the United States, um, and uh, Randy is going to talk to us about the speech craft series um, which focuses on uh, academic English for those of you who might be teaching that or interested in um, a more academic approach. I would like to um, spend a little bit of time uh, talking about self-study textbooks because I feel like uh, they're a bit of a controversial topic in the community um, because of, um, you know, they get kind of a bad rep, but there are some pros to using them and to recommending uh, them to students as well. And Marsha is then going to um, give us an overview on some other um, resources available to teachers of pronunciation. Uh, so here we're talking about um, uh, these the textbooks that teach teachers how to teach um, and are a little bit um, have been designed with teachers in mind. So let me get right to our first title, um, which we really love. And um, I'll be pr presenting throughout most of this webinar, but um, we we chose these titles and, and, and uh, decided which books to focus on together. Um, so I think this this is a title that we all felt really strongly about. And I also believe that it really exemplifies um, a, what uh, successful modern pronunciation textbooks are, are, are like. It exemplifies some of the their focus and their and the type of activities that you might find in, in a lot of these titles that that we'll be uh, discussing today. Um, so the Well Said series, um, uh, there's two titles. There's the uh, the main uh, one, it's in its fourth edition right now, um, and great improvements have been made to this edition. Um, and that it focuses mostly on intermediate to advanced learners. And then the well said intro version of the book uh, has been designed for uh, beginner and low intermediate um, learners. Um, each book is, is $68. Um, if, if you were to buy it from the publisher, um, you can get it for uh, cheaper on Amazon and, and in on, on the, there, there are plenty of used copies available too. And the uh, audio for these books is um, available online and it's free. So I think this is a pretty good deal altogether. Um, and I will show you a sample uh, chapter, um, but in each unit, we we have distinct segments. So we start with a warm up. Um, maybe let me show you uh, what that looks like. So this is actually a sample chapter from uh, the well said intro uh, book. And um, th this is available to you um, online. So uh, you can take a look at this uh, after the, the webinar too. But in each unit, what we find is a really nice warm-up activity that has the students um, listening and noticing certain things about sound. So for example, here we have a voicemail message and the students have to uh, check the, the word that they hear. Uh, this is a warm-up for a lesson about final consonant sounds. So here we have like J and Jake. Um, and then from the warm-up, we go into a segment that I really like called Notice which focuses on 
uh, perception and um, getting the students to uh, become more familiar with the sounds of English and the rhythm, intonation, um, super segmental patterns as well. As you can see, this is a night, the fourth edition, uh, or actually this is the second edition of the intro book, but both um, books are very colorful. Um, the design is clean, modern, not too busy, not overwhelming is something we really like about them. And the next segment um, goes into rules and practice. Um, pretty um, straightforward and um, uh, explained pretty, pretty, pretty straight in a pretty straightforward fashion. And then we have um, some, uh, we have some guided practice with listening and with speaking and lots and lots of great communication practice communicative activities. Actually, in a moment, we'll do one of these activities together. I'm hoping that I'll have some volunteers to, to help me out here. But um, uh, as you can see, there's um, both short drills and full-on communicative activities that involve negotiation of meaning. Um, so one student gets to choose uh, a, a, a certain contextualized phrase, um, and then the other students has to react to it by um, identifying what was being said. So I feel like this book um, uh, does a really great job of contextualizing instruction and following this type of modern research-based um, approach to uh, pronunciation teaching, just like um, I would say most of the um, the books that we'll be looking at today, including Clear Speech and the Focus on Pronunciation series. Now, something I really love about um, Well Said is that it prioritizes features of pronunciation that are most likely to interfere with intelligibility. Um, so we can we you can definitely see that. Um, uh, second language acquisition research has been taken into account in, uh, you know, when it comes to the selection of, of pronunciation points that are being discussed. Um, and uh, there's a major focus on um, super segmentals here. Um, there's a really wonderful study uh, done in 2014 by Deborah Ricketts um, that actually analyzed um, uh, quantitatively uh, some 15 or 16 popular textbooks for pronunciation teaching and um, uh, gave us these, these these numbers. So for example, 60% of the activities in um, the well said intro book are actually uh, communicative. Um, let's see. Okay, and then um, a couple of things that we love about this book um, and also this type of a modern um, pronunciation training title um, is that there's lots and lots of great communicative activities for pairs and groups of students. Um, and um, in this particular one, uh, we have a section called the pronunciation log, um, where the students are uh, get to listen to themselves, record um, uh, their speech and attend to it. So um, this can be uh, used as homework. This can be, this, this really helps to promote uh, self-correction and self-monitoring of, of, of um, English and pr English pronunciation. Um, in the fourth edition of Well Said, we also have um, uh, TOEFL speaking practice activities that really nicely connect um, the pronunciation points that are being taught to uh, TOEFL speaking activities and um, shows students some sample responses um, marked for pronunciation points. So I think uh, that this is really neat. And what I also, as a non-native English speaker myself, I really appreciated that some recordings um, in the book uh, featured non-native English accents. So um, there is a there is a neat um, shadowing task there, uh, where the 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 speaker that the students are supposed to to shadow, imitate, and then record themselves actually speaks with a, a noticeable um, but clear uh, foreign 
accent. So I really like that um, for, you know, promoting um, non-native speaker educators and also showing the students that, you know, there's nothing wrong with having a non-native um, sounding accent as long as you're easy to understand, comprehend. So I wanted to do um, an activity from uh, Well Said, um, and let me share a picture with you. Okay. Oh, not, not this one. Uh, one second. Okay, there you go. So here, um, this is taken from the uh, intermediate uh, to advanced book from Well Said. And um, here I'm going to need two volunteers. So please raise your hand if you'd like to be a volunteer or just say something. Oh, I, I see Joseph raising uh, their hand. Perfect. And then one more person. Anyone else? And I'm not monitoring the chat. I, I see that you've been writing things in the chat, but I'm very bad at looking at the chat while I'm... Okay, Seth is going to be my second volunteer. Thank you so much. So for this task, I would like you to use your, your, your microphones. And um, we're actually, I'm actually going to put a spin on it because I think that this type of task um, works really well, uh, sort of Jeopardy style. Um, to give you a bit of a, a background, um, students here were taught about um, uh, focus words. So the most stressed or uh, words in a phrase, the, the words that get the most attention. And um, what I really liked about the explanation in Well Said is that talked, it talked about th th this neutral um, focus um, word placement, which usually um, uh, falls on the last content word of a phrase. And then um, it, it discussed, the book discusses um, using switching focus of uh, word placement uh, for um, to 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 add a la another layer of meaning or to 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 um, uh, express a particular idea. So, for example, here you can see that um, the the phrase "I called my mother" uh, can be uh, pronounced with "mother" or the first syllable in "mother" being the stressed syllable, um, and that's more of a neutral response to the question, "What did you do last night?" Oh, I called my mother, but um, it, we could also shift the focus word to called um, to 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 clarify that this in, in in fact happened. So you should call your mother. No, I called my mother, right? I called my mother. What are you talking about? Uh, so the way we're going to do this activity, um, I would like to, uh, it, it's a little bit different than the instruction here, um, but I think it works really well as in this sort of Jeopardy style. Um, so I would like Seth to, um, pick one of these phrases, um, say it out loud with uh, considering the, 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 the focus word that is underlined and um, in bold. And then Joseph is going to respond with a question. Um, so for example, here it's a question, what did you do last night, right? So if, says, if Seth um, says, I called my mother, then I would like Joseph to uh, identify which phrase was being said and respond with uh, what's on the left-hand side, okay? So, um, Seth, do you want to start? So it could be anything on the list or should I just do number one and two? Um, you, could, you could do anything on the list. Yeah, I think we, we did number one, so maybe, maybe we could start with number two. Okay, uh, I just got back from a long vacation. You need a long vacation. There you go. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, Joseph here correctly identified back as the focus word and responded with you need a long vacation. Um, so I wanted to do it this way uh, for the purpose of the meeting. Probably in if I was teaching a class, I would start with the regular way and then um, flip it. Let's do one more. And now maybe you could um, switch. So Joseph, how about um, you do number four and read one of the uh, uh, responses on the right? No, I faxed it. Did you mail that memo? Very good, yeah. So the focus here is on the the way the memo was, uh, was shared. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. And I'm well, sorry. I, saying, I love this type of exercise because I think that's, that stress pattern and context is something students have trouble with. You know, I think it's definitely, it's um, you know, I found that um, I wanted to do this activity because I, I really think it exemplifies um, the communicative nature of of so many of of the activities not just in well said but also in clear speech and um, focus on pronunciation one uh these books have come a long way and in their uh, you know latest edition they're they're really jam-packed with these type of negotiation of meaning exercises um and what i really liked about well said too is that it um uh you know the the, the explanations are really not just clear but also everything's really accurate and i find that in some pronunciation textbooks uh some uh creators of those have have referred to sort of outdated knowledge about pronunciation with like long and short vowels and things like that but i really think that these the latest editions of these textbooks and especially well said you know it it's it ex explains pronunciation the way we really use it without falling back on some outdated concepts. Okay, um, let's move on from this task. Thank you so much, Seth and Joseph. Thank you for participating. All right, let me uh, move to my slides again. Mm -hmm. And that's true for the Clear Speech um, series as well. And here again, we have one book that's more for beginners and another um, that's more better designed for the intermediate level. Um, uh, overall, I think the um, activities are slightly lower level in the intermediate um, one than with Well Said. So that's why I said intermediate and not intermediate to advanced. Um, the book is a little bit cheaper than well said, and it includes downloadable um, audio as well online. Um, and here uh, we have um, a slightly more um, straightforward structure. Here's an, also a sample of the um, uh, clear speech from the start version of the book. So um, for, for beginners and lower low intermediate learners. Um, so for example, uh, this, this whole unit is about syllables and there's a bit of um, introduction. There's um, uh, There aren't really specific sections of presentation, noticing and, and, and practice, but things are um, done a little bit more organically with and step-by-step step with first just introducing uh, that we can have two, one, two, or three syllables, and here we have a, 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 a um, listening discrimination activity. Um, we have um, another one, and actually, um, out of all the, the books that um, we, we're looking at, um, begin, the beginner level book features the greatest number of perception activities out of all the, the books that have been analyzed. And that's also from the Ricketts study. Um, so here, Clear Speech really um, believes that we need to get the students to, per to, to listen and to perceive and be able to discriminate uh, different types of pronunciation before we focus on production. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we uh, finish up with some uh, communicative practice too. And again, it's a it's sim similarly a, a pair work activity. Um, so one student would say, we wanted to buy a used car. And um, the other one will have to recognize which which whether it was past or present. And then yeah, and I really like uh, that in this book, um, the uh, pronunciation points are a little bit s more spiraled than in others, which means that they're, um, that they're being um, reinforced at different, uh, in different units at different um, uh, points in time. So we, we have um, intonation and suprasegmentals all throughout the book, even when uh, in, in units where um, the focus might be more on vowels or consonants. 
Um, and speaking of consonants, I think that the clear speech treatment, uh, sorry, clear, clear speech series does the best job uh, and, and does a wonderful treatment of consonants with really helpful illustrations. I think when it comes to um, segmentals, uh, these books really focus on consonants a little bit more than vowels, but do a really wonderful job of presenting and, and, and uh, showing students uh, great ways to, 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 to practice that as well. Okay, um, I wanted now to move on to a series that I also really love. And like I said, um, with these books are top notch and uh, I'm not saying that necessarily some are uh, better than others, but um, they do slightly differ in their focus. Um, now with this, this series, um, there, there are actually three books um, they come for three different levels. We've got um, a beginner to, to uh, and lower intermediate, A1, A2. Uh, we've got a focus and precision two, um, B1 to, through B2, and then an advanced textbook on uh, level three. Um, each book, uh, I wasn't able to find them on publishers' websites. Um, but each book is around $45 on Amazon and comes with a, an MP3 CD uh, right there. Um, and um, here I'm actually going to use my doc cam because I wanted to show you what one of these books look like. Uh, looks like. Um, I really love how straightforward um, and beautifully designed everything is in this series. Um, I think that uh, the illustrations are really, uh, really clear. Um, the, it's, everything looks really clean and neat and um, pretty. There's a load of, um, there, there's loads of illustrations and they're all done by the, I think the same a uh, graphic designer. So there's a um, there, there there's lots of uh, clarity and 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 uh, it's just a really great looking series of books. Um, and here, uh, just like with well said, uh, we have a, more of a formal division into presentation, focused practice, and communication practice, um, and. In the, with this with this series, I'm especially fond of uh, the first book, and that's probably my favorite um, uh, beginner level textbook for pronunciation classes. Um, because um, let me go back to my slide. Mm, because what the level one does is um, it not only uses uh, lower level language and the examples and the words that are being practiced, um, but also in instructions. So instead of linking or liaisons, we have uh, something along the lines of uh, connecting the last sound of a word to the first sound to the, to, to another word. Um, everything is explained in, in, in a, you, you know, it, just how um, a lower level student would be would be comfortable. Um, and uh, everything is explained with uh, lower level students in mind. Um, the, and these books are really comprehensive. Um, so not they not only focus on uh, those points in pr pronunciation that most affect uh, intelligibility, um, but uh, you know throughout the the series, it's over six hundred pages total, um, and in in the more advanced um, uh, in the advanced level, even things that have to do with uh, slang and and very informal speech, things like shoulda, woulda, uh, are covered. Um, and then, uh, according to Ricketts, um, actually, uh, focus and precision one has had the largest percentage of communicative activities among beginning books. So I think I told you earlier that it was clear speech, and uh, I, I apologize. That, so um, it's actually focused on pronunciation um, one. And here I would like to do another activity. And here I'm only going to need one volunteer. Um, but this is an activity I love from the focus on pronunciation one um, textbook. So let me share 
another picture with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, just to double check, can you see a table that says abilities and skills right here? Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, um, let me ask for one volunteer right now, um, maybe someone who hasn't spoken yet. Sorry, I'll um, have it die hard. Um, uh, Kristen? Yep. Is that how we spell uh, how I should pronounce your name, Kristen? Yes, yes, thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Kristen. Yeah, so um, in this activity, um, what I would do is first ask students to um, fill out this uh, table, this form, this questionnaire for themselves. Um, so for example, I can play guitar, I play the piano, I sing, although not that well. <laughs> um, I can't play golf, um, so I'm going to put an X here. Um, I, I can ski, actually, but I, I honestly, I can't swim, um, which is it's really strange because I've lived I, I lived in Los Angeles for so long. Um, and I'm okay at cooking. I can drive. And let's say that I speak Polish, my first language. So I'm going to put Polish here. So this is what the student uh, students would do on their own. Um, and then I would ask them to interview their partner. And I would ask uh, to make it a little bit more guided at first. Um, I would ask uh, the, the students to only respond with um, I can or I can't. Um, no, please don't use yes uh, or no. Because here we're focusing on getting the students to, um, you know, in, 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 in case of can, to uh, pronounce it with a schwa in the middle and stress the next word, you know, I can play. And in um, case of can't, to pronounce the vowel fully and stress can't a little bit like, I can't play golf or I can't golf, right? Uh, so Kristen, um, let me ask you a couple of questions if you don't mind. And please only respond with I can or I can't, okay. plus plus whatever I, I ask here. So uh, Kristen, can you, can you play the guitar? I can't play the guitar. All right, so I think this is a no. <laughs> Am I oh, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. And then, you know, there's negotiation of meaning, of course. Uh, but let me ask uh, Kristen. Kristen, can you drive? I can drive. I can drive. Uh huh. I think okay. it's a yes, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Because the vowel was shorter, drive uh, was given a little bit more uh, stress. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you. Um, uh, Kristen, can you can you speak? Uh, what languages can you speak? I can speak Japanese. Oh wow, awesome! So I would say speaks. Uh, I definitely heard you stress speak, and um, uh, the the vowel and can being shorter. I'm going to write down Japanese. Now, can you speak Polish though? I can't speak Polish. No, you can't speak Polish. All right. I wish I could. Yeah, I wish I could speak Japanese. <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, that's basically the activity. Um, thanks so much, Kristen, for volunteering. Uh, there's actually a follow up here, um, but I'm going to have to clear my annotations because unfortunately they don't move with the picture. But the follow up in, in this textbook is that um, uh, you can use the students can use the information from the chart to write two sentences about their partner and then read them out loud. So now I could say, oh, I talked to Kristen and uh, Kristen can drive, but she can't play the guitar. And Kristen can, can speak Japanese, but she can't speak Polish, right? And then the instructor could at this point um, give some corrective feedback. And yeah, I think this is a really neat activity for teaching that particular pronunciation point of can and can't, but um, focus on pronunciation. All three books um, have 
lots and lots of great communicate communicative activities like that. Okay, let me now finish up with um, uh, the uh, community college slash uh, university level books. Um, another one that is commonly used and is, is a great book is Targeting Pronunciation by Sue Miller. Um, and this one, I would say, skews slightly higher level than the other ones. I would say upper intermediate to advanced. Although if you um, adjust the activities, then lower intermediate would work too. Um, it's $70 from publisher uh, and audio CDs are sold separately. I wasn't able to find um, uh, audio recordings online. Uh, the focus is on super segmentals. Um, I really love their treatment of intonation. Um, and again, lots of communicative activities, fun role plays, lots of pair group activities. Um, and um, I found that the, the hints and instructions for independent practice were useful too. And I feel like this book could be used a little bit more um, with students who don't necessarily have a teacher as a self-study uh, text. Now, unfortunately, um, the last, uh, the latest edition of this book is second, the second edition and it, it doesn't look nearly as modern as the other books. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of content here and the content is great, uh, but it's still black and white and um, could be slightly overwhelming to students and teachers with just the amount of stuff there is here. So this is a book that I draw from um, mostly for activities with, with pretty advanced students. And Randy, I think you've had some experience with uh, targeting pronunciation. Is that right? Yeah, right, Patrick. You know, I uh, agree with you. I really love the way that it treats intonation. And one of the pages from this book that I still use to this day, even though I don't use the whole book anymore, I, I love this page um, near the end where a, an entire conversation takes place using intonation or where where one partner is only using intonation so if you know for example uh somebody says um well have you seen my cat and the response is hmm or yeah maybe i should keep my cat indoors and the response is hmm and so the um uh the uses of intonation to respond kind of refer to different emotions or different interactive values is really interesting and something that I haven't found in any other book. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and and someone, I, I just scrolled through the chat, said that they love this book. And, you know, I also think that all the ones that we've been talking about here, um, you know, are really wonderful. And I, I'm really looking forward to, um, hopefully getting my hands on a new edition of targeting pronunciation if it comes out <laughs> it's because i think that just with a with a bit of an update it could be even better um and going back to you randy actually um i think you wanted to ask a question and maybe talk about uh this other series of textbooks well, sure. And maybe Patrick, you can help me by telling me what people respond in the chat since I'm not um, monitoring the chat right now. Oh, but sure. my, my question is, do you teach graduate students? Um, do you teach international TAs? And maybe I should broaden my question here because this series of books is also directed towards any advanced academic learners, you know, such as upper division undergraduates, and also professionals who are not in academics. But um, what I should say is the uh, series comes with a textbook that you should that you see in the middle of these three images here, and two optional workbooks uh, on the left and the right. And if you're working, for example, Amber, I heard you say that you're working with um, professionals who are not in an academic setting and they could benefit from 
the main book, uh, which really doesn't focus only on academic discourse, but it introduces um, contexts where two colleagues are speaking in an office, for example, um, or a supervisor and an employee in kind of a professional setting. I would say if you wanted to um, use this with advanced uh, graduate students or advanced undergraduate students, you might also use the workbook for academic discourse. If you're working with international TAs, as I do at UC Santa Barbara, you might also want to add the workbook for international TA discourse. But even with those populations, just the textbook by itself is a great standalone book. And what I love about this is there's no focus on segmentals. It's all on rhythm and intonation. Um, the chapters are divided up into uh, word stress. And there are many, many chapters on word stress. This is something that Wayne Dickerson devoted a lot of his career to. And so there were just lists and lists of hundreds and hundreds of words um, it grouped into, um, well, you know, sorted into groups according to the pattern. So as you guys pr probably know, the um, long suffixed words in English are very often have a predictable stress pattern according to the suffix. If we add ology to the end of a word, you know that all is always going to be the stressed syllable in biology, physiology, uh, entomology, whatever the ology happens to be. Um, similarly, the IC words or ICS words, they will always be stressed in the syllable right before the suffix, whether it's economics or linguistics or mathematics. Um, so the words are grouped in that way um, when it comes to word stress. And then the intonation development in this series is also really, really strong. All of the practice exercises for students start in a context, and the context is described a little bit at the beginning of the practice, and then there's a dialogue between two or more people. Um, and Long and short dialogues are really the strong point of this series, I'd say. So that's all I want to say about this. I, I don't think there are very many as a, of us here at this meeting who are teaching students at this level. So I'll um, pass the baton to, I think it's Marsha who's going to talk next. Thank you so much, Randy. Um, well, we before Marsha talks about um, resources for um, teachers, of pronunciation, um, there's actually one last thing I wanted to mention, unless unless I don't have time to do that, Marsha, what do you think? Okay, very quickly. So um, I wanted to talk about self-study books too, a little bit. And by self-study, I mean um, these books that are widely available. Uh, usually uh, they have the word accent in their name and a big American flag. Um, so for instance, we have the uh, American Accent Training by Ann Cook, uh, Mastering the English Accent by Lisa Moisson, and Perfecting English Pronunciation by Susan Cameron. Um, and uh, I think that with some teachers, these books have, have gotten a bad rep because um, the, the at, at least the cover uh, image and the title focuses on accent as opposed to pronunciation, uh, which is likely for marketing reasons, and it doesn't really change the type of activities and, and the type of content that's in, in, in those books, which um, definitely prioritizes intelligibility and comprehensibility. Um, there's, because these books have been created for individual use, there's li limited number of um, communicative activities or you know, some of, some of the, those books downright have no communicative activities. And their methodology may not be informed by current SLA research. I'm not talking about those three, but some other study books, um, self-study books have been created by actors and, 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 you know, they're not necessarily informed by this type of research that, that we're, we're used to. 
Um, but I have a soft spot in my heart uh, for these books. Uh, the way my ability to speak with uh, clearly in English, I would attribute to uh, the American accent training by Ann Cook. That was all I used before I started uh, teaching uh, or, or before I did grad school. Um, and I wanted to point to some benefits of using uh, these books as secondary texts. Um, I think that because they're designed for students with no background knowledge about pronunciation, uh, even be like beginner, uh, teachers can benefit from uh, looking at them because everything's explained very clearly. Um, uh, the, uh, the the explanations are long, and perfecting your your English pronunciation with Susan Cameron, for example, it actually includes um, in the in the previous edition it was a DVD. Now I think it's uh, it's all online, but there's videos with explanations um, that beginning pronunciation teachers can 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 use if if they don't feel one hundred percent comfortable you know with their knowledge of of pronunciation points yet um these books are really cheap and widely available mastering the american accent which is probably my favorite one of of the of the three is 14.99 with downloadable audio um they include hours of sentences and long paragraphs to imitate and um i would say the drills are certainly out of vogue uh, right now when, when it comes to um, teaching pronunciation. And of course, research shows that communicative activities are necessary and they really contribute to pr pronunciation, uh, you know, attainment. And I'm not saying that, you know, we should do, we should go back to, to, to drills exclusively. Um, but I think that uh, you know, depending on the type of teachers that you have, uh, students that you have and their goals, um, having uh, content uh, that students can imitate and, and, and drill um, as homework is really useful too. Um, perf the perfecting English pronunciation um, similarly to the speechcraft um, uh, books, it actually has long lists of hundreds of words with a particular pronunciation feature. Um, it has really nice, um, uh, long contextualized sentences uh, for, 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 for practicing, um, you know, everything the book uh, strives to teach. So in terms of just the amount of content that a, a pronunciation teacher could use for their drills and could uh, ask students to shadow, for example, or imitate as homework, um, you know, uh, all of these books are a wonderful resource. And my final point here, uh, it, it's actually something I forgot to put on the slide, um, but these books usually include um, L1 specific guides for uh, instructors. So similarly to that book that um, Paula, I think, um, uh, mentioned, which is a, a fantastic resource. Um, it's called Learner English. Um, these books um, uh, all have uh, at, at the at the end of, um, of 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 these books, you'll find guides um, for what the typical mistakes could be or the typical um, problem areas could be uh, for students depending on their L one. So these books uh, tend to talk a lot about transfer and 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 pronunciation points that you might want to um, address with a particular group of students. Again, this makes it makes them a really uh, wonderful resource for teachers who maybe haven't gone through um, a, 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 their master's in, in ESOL yet. Um, and could, you know, use a bit of, 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 of Met training on methodology and and just the sound system of English or what's really happening in your mouth. Um, so yeah, just wanted to say that um, uh, there are some pros to taking a look at these books that are widely available. Like I said, mastering the American accent, I you can you can get at the Barnes and Noble for fourteen ninety nine, um, but they do offer some 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 really great. Um, things. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone. And I think I'm going to pass the baton now 
um, to Marsha, who's going to tell us more about. Yeah, well, that's great. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick. You've done a great job of talking about the different kinds of books that are used in classrooms and that are um, available to uh, to teachers who are doing classes. And uh, Randy, you talked about the ones for ed more advanced learners, because we do have some people here like Seth, you know, university, and we're working with students who are at higher higher proficiency levels. And now I'm a retired, I'm retired from Mission College. So I'm not in the classroom with, um, you know, beginning and intermediate students. Um, my private practice is typically with students who are uh, probably have far more degrees than I have and in their particular fields and they want to become um, more proficient at English um, with all the wild things that they have learned in, uh, in a, probably a multitude of, of languages. So it's important for us to have a lot of different options, uh, not only for a classroom, but, you know, the self-study books that you talked about, you know, um, if you are a self-starter and, you know, very highly um, motivated learner, there are a lot of things that you can get um, from looking at a list and knowing what you're going to, to to look for. So thanks a lot for telling us those things. I wanted to, to let everybody know that we do have, um, if, if you don't mind, could I go ahead and do share, share screen? Oh, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I wanted to mention is, okay, we do have, let's see, what do we have here? Uh, let's see. Uh, the Okay. So, um, one of the things I did want to say is that, uh, let's see, what am I sharing? Uh, am I end up, let's see, I'm sharing, tell me what, what's showing up on my screen here. I'm kind of multitasking here. Um, is anything showing at all? Not, not yet. yet. You're not oh, okay, sharing not yet. Right all right. So let me go ahead and click this button here. And um, I wanted to go to our, our Katisa home site because I want you to know that we do have resources available to you as members and even non-members because we have our Katisal Journal. So Katisal Journal is an open source. It's available to you whether you're a member or a guest. And one of the issues that we did uh, in, not too long ago was a special issue on pronunciation. And this is volume number 30. Volume 30, number one, it's a, got an imprint of 2018. So this is a special interest or a special issue on pronunciation that was edited for us by our own Donna Brinton here at Catisal, as well as uh, our guest editors, John M. Levis and Anna Wu. And so this might have some articles in it that could inform you as a teacher of pronunciation or as a teacher of any oral skills that have to do with speaking and pronouncing. So that's going to be available to you. All you have to do is come to the home page and under communication, you can go to um, the journal in that way. All right. Now, um, what else? Okay. So um, other resources that I think are great to have on your shelf. Some of these I have on my shelf and I refer to them. Um, the Teaching of Pronunciation book by uh, Mary Ann Sells Mercia, Donna Brinton, Janet Goodwin, and the latest edition by um, includes Barry Griner. So I believe I don't have the latest edition. I have one of the earlier editions, but the latest edition is available. And it's a wonderful resource because it's got all of the things you need to know as a teacher of pronunciation. What is pronunciation? How is it involved? What are some things you can do at, at beginning, intermediate, and advanced levels? Um, and so it goes into the research of it and, and, and pedagogical implications and also practice. So that's a great one. Another three that are available from TESOL publications. Um, this one is called Beyond Repeat After Me, which is by our own Marla Yoshida, who has been part of TOP. She was a co-coordinator with me a couple of years ago. So this one is another um, book that you might be interested in taking a look at um, because, you know, that 
a lot of the books, the earlier books were very much repeat. And then of course this one, what it does, it includes a lot of activities and thought processes about how to activate um, different parts of sociolinguistics and, and pragmatics uh, with, with learners. New ways in teaching speaking and new ways in, in um, teaching connected speech. These are like recipe books. So these kinds of books, um, these are edited volumes. And then professionals like me have put in um, different articles about uh, different, different kinds of pronunciation activities that you might find useful if you're looking for activities. So it'll tell you, it's kind of, as I said, it's kind of like a recipe book. It'll tell you what level it's good for. It'll tell you what the aim of a particular activity is. It'll tell you like how much class time you should prepare, um, if there's preparation, what you need to do for it. Then it gives you, you know, what are the, the procedures for, for delivering the activity? And if there are any caveats, uh, uh, then those are added as well. So these two volumes are also, like this one, available from TESOL. Another favorite is um, this Pronunciation Myths book which is by uh, Linda Grant. Of course, we see how much we like Linda Grant's work. And so she edited this volume. And in this volume, um, written by many professionals in the field of um, teaching pronunciation, have talked about um, myths that people may have, and then they go about dismissing them. Um, for example, myth number one is, once you've been speaking a second language for years, it's too late to change your pronunciation. Low. So Tracy During and Murray Monroe talk about their research uh, that dismisses this myth. Pronunciation instruction is not appropriate for beginning level learners, which is bunk. So this is something that um, Beth Zielinski and Linda Yates uh, from, let's see, are they from Los... Uh, down under either Australia or New Zealand. Ooh, they debunk this one. Another one is called pronunciation teaching has to establish in the minds of language learners a set of distinct consonant and vowel sounds. All right, so this one, John Fields debunks that one. Intonation is hard to teach. Uh, Judy Gilbert, um, one of our um, early members of Katisa pronunciation and the author of Clear Speech debunks this one about intonation being hard. Um, students would make better progress in pronunciation if they just practiced more. That's Linda Grant's um, myth to debunk. Accent reduction and pronunciation instruction are the same thing. Ron Thompson says, not so. Teacher training programs provide adequate preparation in how to teach pronunciation. John Murphy has done a lot of research on what schools that teach MA TESOL students do and don't do to prepare teachers of pronunciation, which is why being part of topic is so important because we continually do professional development, whether or not your um, master's program included stuff like that. Now, a recent publication um, by John M. Levis, who is huge in pronunciation in terms of writing a journal, and he came to speak for us, um, and he does a lot of work in this with his graduate students, is intelligibility, oral communication, and the teaching of pronunciation. So again, focusing on why, um, why we teach pronunciation, we teach it so that we can help other users be, become more intelligible, not so that they can speak just like me, but so they can be intelligible to each other. Um, if you're interested in assessment, how do we assess? This is really hard, a very difficult subject, is how do we assess somebody's pronunciation, whether it's acceptable or not, whether it's intelligible or not. So here's a volume that I believe uh, is it a TESOL volume? I can't remember. No, it's second language acquisition. So this is a little bit more academic and it talks about different ways that you can do assessment of pronunciation. And there are um, 
sociolinguistic concerns, there are psycholinguistic uh, speech sciences. So these are, um, that's what this volume will help you with. Discourse intonation. Now this is something, this is a new publication. It's by Lucy Pickering, who's done a lot of um, research on the um, intonation and understanding it as well as teaching it, especially in terms of discourse, that is while we are talking with each other. So this is a good volume. If you're looking for some sorts of um, lighthearted and easy to work with tips, then Mark Hancock's 50 tips for teaching pronunciation may be something you'd like to have on your shelf too. And then you can open it and take a look and see what tips might work with students that you are um, you're working. So I'm sure all of us, we, we don't all teach at the same level. And it's possible that some of us teach at different levels, right? I already heard that today. You know, some of you are teaching this level class and that level class. And some some semesters you may teach this level and some semesters you may teach that level. So uh, we have to have our bag of tricks has to be pretty big. And so these are some of the resources that I think you might want to include. But I'm very open to listening to other ideas that you all have. Um, for both books that you like to use with students and um, books that you like as teacher resources. So feel free to open your mics and um, or tap in the chat, whichever you prefer. But, you know, it's a good time to open your mics and we can listen to you because we'd love to hear your pronunciation. Okay, no, I'm not going to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Please speak no, up. No, we no. love to hear your voice. No, I, I, it was just a joke. Actually, I don't I I don't teach pronunciation. I've never taught it. Um but I do once in a while when my my textbook suggests, you know, teaching a feature, I do my best to to teach it. Um I rely on a copy of Clear Speech that I have, an old copy. I use it. I like it. I'm gonna see if I can get uh, some of the books that uh, Patrick suggested at the beginning of the presentation. Um, I, concerning your question, I sometimes um, use uh, the YouTube channel Rachel Rachel's English. I believe that's the name. Um, some of the videos are way too long, but I kind of watch them myself, you know, just to understand. Um, the pronunciation feature and then I try to explain it to my students. I don't necessarily have the students watch the video because they're just too long, but I, I watch them myself and try to get an idea what she's trying to say. But I'm going to definitely get a copy of some of the books that Patrick suggested. Thank yeah, you. we'll be sending out the uh, mm -hmm. link to the this after the after the show. So uh, mm -hmm. somebody Thank asked you. that question. Yeah, we'll be happy to share this and um, um, then thank you. Know. Yeah. Thanks, Vanessa. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you for your input. Anybody else want to add something about what you use or, uh, yeah. that you I'd would like recommend? To Paula. Sorry. Hi. Hey, Paula. Um, I, following up on Hancock's, uh, tips, the tips book, I haven't actually seen that one, but I love, uh, well, his pronunciation games is like, you know, a classic. I've used that at all levels of teaching, but I, the, the new series, the prom pack, that he came out with the four books. Oh yeah, I've, I've heard about it. I've read about it, but I haven't seen it. Oh, it, I, I highly recommend the Prawn Pack series. It's by Hancock. Um, and they're, they're just really grab and go worksheets, worksheets on a different, like, you know, one is, I, I can't remember the different four divisions of, of how he divides them, but you know, there's rhythm work, there's stress, intonation, there's just, uh, there's in, phonetics or the individual phonemes. The, the Prawn Pack series by Hancock, which is the newest of his stuff, I highly recommend it. It's great. Marsha, do you want to show it? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and show that. Just uh, Google Prawn. Sorry. I'm, oh, it's just really in Google. Here in uh, Google Prawn Pack Hancock. Um, I used it like in 2019 at my last class at UC Berkeley, where I was teaching pronunciation, the summer English language studies or session. And um, yeah, I just, I just, I, oops, I, did. I just press the bomb. Okay, here it is. Yep, you can see it right there. 
Lots so of one is work. puzzles, workouts, pair work, and poems. Yeah. So it's it's a, like a, it's a much more amplified version of his first pronunciation games book that was like yeah. ages ago. Mm -hmm. um, and they're all downloadable. Like there's you can get a PDF. Everything's online as well. The PDFs and the listenings or the audio. So whether you have the physical book, like you can also buy it and get access to it online. How cool. Nice. Very nice. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. And yeah, no worries. Others? Anybody else want to share anything else? Don't be shy. Um, I just want to share um, a YouTube channel that I've been using as well which is the Accents Way English with Hadar. And I also use your videos, Marsha, sometimes with my students. I try to find your YouTube videos. Oh, my YouTube videos. OK. Well, I just I, I just got a message from uh, from YouTube that it, it, it uh, I hit 10,000 members, which is probably not very many compared to uh, famous athletes but not too bad. <laughs> and uh, so actually, uh, you know, the book that I'm most familiar with is Phrase by Phrase, which is my own book, but it's, it's, uh, it's not new. And, uh, but I, it is still beloved by some uh, schools where, where they use it a lot and, you know, where they can get the book and download all the audio and, and uh, videos that they need to practice with. And it works from a, um, uh, I'm, I feel that pronunciation is very holistic and needs to incorporate a lot of listening and pronunciation. So as some of the other textbooks that we have looked at and actually that I have used or I have violated, um, they do have a lot of listening to it. There's always a listening component that starts everything and there's broad listening and then there's narrow listening and broad listening, listening for content and ideas and uh, feelings and then going down to listening for sounds and sound patterns. And then this hourglass thing goes back into working on sounds and sound patterns and bringing it out into into sentences phrase by phrase and to bring it back into a whole contextualized piece. Um, so it all, every lesson starts out with some sort of a story or maybe a dialogue that that uh, that people will listen to for its content and then also for uh, content in terms of uh, phonemes or intonation and stress patterns that they should listen for and then try to build into their own speech by the very end of the program. Um, so I want to thank Patrick, especially for talking so much about our uh, lesson, our lesson books, the books that we use in our, our classrooms. And I also want to oh, invite you much. to things that are coming up that we're having next week, uh, next month. So at this time next month, that will be March uh, 18th, we're going to have a Q&A roundtable, which I think uh, Randy's going to say something a little bit more about. And in April, instead of having just a simple professional development webinar like we're doing now, we're going to have our invited guests, Dr. Jen Foote from the University of Alberta and Dr. Ron Thompson from Brock University. Both of these are Canadians and they don't have to fly over. They're going to be coming here virtually during our, um, our program, which we call our spring conference. So Katisa is having a spring conference and it'll be on two weekends. So I want you guys to mark these dates down, 23rd and the 30th, which are both Saturdays. We're going to have our spring conference all virtual, all right? And in the fall, we're going to have our face-to-face -face conference in Pasadena. That's September 29th through the 2nd of October. So these are the next two that are coming up. And perhaps, uh, Randy, you want to say a little bit more about... Oh, before uh, before Randy goes on, uh, Marsha, just one one quick word um, uh -huh. about some something I put. I just put that in the chat too. But okay, uh, we now have a newsletter. <gasps> uh, yes, that you can sign up for even if you're not a Katisal member. So if you yes. if you pre prefer to get our updates directly uh, to your email, um, I posted a, a link to a Google form. You can tell us what kind of updates you'd like to receive and um, how many updates. We promise we, we won't send you more than like three or four 
things a month. <laughs> so we're not going to spam you, but I think it's a nice way to connect uh, if you're not a member um, or if you just, uh, if you're not signed up uh, for, for our, if you're not a member of our message board too, because that's where uh, the updates usually go through. Okay. All right. That's great. Okay. So everybody got that in the chat, right? So go ahead and click on that one. And then you'll add your name to uh, hear about the events that we're going to be putting on. Sounds good. Great. Thank for thank you very much, Patrick, for putting that together. That's a great idea. Shall we have um, Randy say some more about this one? Uh, first, I just wanted to see if Paula had her hand raised. Paula, did you have a question or a comment? Nope. Okay, maybe not. And the question about is that April twenty third and thirtieth from Seth? Yes. So oh, that's right. Our, uh huh. Our spring, our Catisol uh, spring is going to be the, those two dates. Uh, you know, I think um, very quickly. I think one of the challenges we face is the fact that students. Um, don't receive pronunciation instruction at an early stage. I know when I, and this could, could apply to any of our uh, webinars, but I, I know like when I was studying Spanish and French, pronunciation was one of the first things that we were taught. And I mean, it doesn't mean that we kind of understood everything, um, but uh, you know, I'm just kind of astounded even now but when I encounter people who've been studying a language for 10 years or more and have never had any pronunciation instruction. And I think that you know, the challenge. I mean, there's no immediate answer to that, but it just something to consider. Yeah. Well, you know, the research that John, uh, John Murphy did on uh, pronunciation instruction, at least English pronunciation instruction uh, uh, around North America, um, there were a lot of different reasons. And one of them was that the professors weren't taught to do that. So they didn't feel like they knew how to teach somebody else to do that. And so the feeling of, I guess, a lack of competence in doing it um, was one of the things. And then there are the non-native speakers who don't have the confidence that their pronunciation is strong enough or um, standard enough or intelligible enough to be the, the expert on this. Um, there's also the problem of administrators looking down on people who don't speak American the way they speak American and not allowing non-native speakers the fact that having come through the learning of English, they really understand a lot about English pronunciation and they should therefore use that information to teach. So there's there are a lot of factors, I guess, that have influenced um, the lack of teaching and learning pronunciation at all at all levels. Well, I just we're say one, trying to change that. Yeah, one quick thing. I, so I've taught abroad since 2007 outside of the US, lots of different language schools. The, I've only ever saw one school that had a full-time pronunciation course, a private language school, and they had developed themselves. It was in Sydney, Australia. And um, other like schools had like a pronunciation elective, so to speak, an hour maybe. But this school taught a 10 week course, two five week blocks, 20 hours a week, full time pronunciation course. And I was lucky enough as a casual to like get trained on that course and teach it. But in all the countries I've been in and all the schools I've worked in, it's the only one I've ever seen. And funny enough that it was in Australia, they still taught pronunciation in American accent oh. because they said the American accent was the megaphone of English accents. Yeah. So it was fascinating what, to watch my Australian colleagues switch into American accent when they did the choral repetition or whatever. Mm. I couldn't have done that for Australian English ever. <laughs> so uh, and then school. Uh, yeah, well, that's pretty fascinating. And now, now you're in in Spain, right? Yeah, yeah. I left the US, California in 2007, went to Sydney, Australia, and now I'm in Spain. And hope to come back to California this summer, but you know, <laughs> COVID. Yeah, COVID. 
but it's been great. Thank you guys so much for sharing uh, those three. I've, I've, used, I've used well said in pronunciation, uh, the two, two of the books, but I just, one quick question. I was gonna put it in the chat, but has anybody used, um, that's still here. Has anybody used, uh, what's it called? I've got these three books here with me. They've traveled around the world with me. Pronouncing American English by, um, who is it? O Orient, no, Orion? Uh, yes, Orion. Uh, I do recall that being uh, used and somehow I didn't like it, but I can't remember much about it. No, I remember it was not a choice I of mine. Yeah, I have a copy, like a, a sample copy. I might have pulled one or two things from it, but I haven't used it. I was just curious if anyone else had. Yeah. Thanks. Anybody else use it? Oh, Sharon didn't like it either. I can't remember what we didn't like about it, but um, I remember I remember looking at it and not liking it. Yeah, fair enough. Me too. Uh, maybe it was, um, you know, you know, the thing is, Every book has some good things and bad things, or maybe everything, every book has some good things in it, not necessarily bad things, but everything has, and maybe there's not enough of the thing that you're looking for. I mean, I, I, I find it fascinating, um, Patrick, when you mentioned that there's somebody who did the research on how many listening activities or what percentage of it or how many, com you know, communicative activities and that sort of, so that's cool. And I think it would be great if you could put the study in our, um, in our slide later on which we will then send out. I mean, because we can embellish these slides before we send them out to you. I will definitely send them out to you. Sure. Um, so it's it's there as a reference right now. Um, oh, okay, that's cool. Okay, it, that's it, cool. It, it's an unpublished master's thesis. So I can actually just put a link to it uh, uh, in the chat right now. Okay, somebody of University of Alberta. That's widely available, yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Under, I think the... Yes, I got it. Got it. Yeah. So 16 English as second language pronunciation books were examined. Okay, but not not Looks the like CDs. Tracy not the CDs. Derwing was the advisor in that thesis. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds interesting. Anything Tracy does. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing I just want, I just, I noted it said, but none of the CD, CDs. So the CD, audio CDs were excluded from the research. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really into listening and what pronunciation is. As, a, as somebody who's published a book and with not only from my own company, little company, teeny weeny company, Sunburst Media, but also with some of the bigger companies. Whenever I did a book and it had audio, I was, I was not only worry, really working on the text, but also on the audio. And I sent back audio several times and I said, no, the intonation has to be this way. No, the, the stress has to be this way. No, the, the linking has to be like so. Um, because I thought that was really key because the students, you know, like how many of them are gonna be learning a lot from the printed word? And how many are they gonna be listening to it and going, oh, so this is what the word sounds like. So that's why I was really keen on making sure the audio came out with the features that I wanted it to. So um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I, I work with a, a publisher, a publisher's book, right? And then the audio accompanies it. And most of the time it's great, but sometimes the audio, there's something wrong with it, especially in terms of what intonation pattern or the stress, like you're thinking that this word should be stressed in that word, in that, in that interaction. And this discourse intonation needs to be like this instead of like that. So I don't know, I would listen to the audios, but I'm sure for her just doing a master's program, she couldn't do all of it. So she just read through the books and not listened to the audio. But I just wanted to say that piece about how audio is really a huge part of a pronunciation book. Okay, well, thanks very much. I love it all that all you guys came here and you contributed um, and you raised your hand to do your activities with Patrick. And I guess it's about time for us to say adios, adieu, See you next month. Thanks, everyone. Thank Have you a wonderful all for weekend. coming. We'll be ending the recording.